Om Namah Shivaya students. Today we are going to start with class 11 history section 4 towards modernization theme 11 part 1 path to modernization. Theme 11 part 1 path to modernization. In this student uh, in this part of the chapter students we are going to read a session that is part 5 theme 11 part 1. Path to modernization. In this part of the chapter students we are going to read about the two powerful dynasties or the two powerful country that situated in the Far East Asia at the beginning of the 19th century. Now at the beginning of the 19th century East Asia is dominated by China. The Qing dynasty heir to a long tradition seemed secure in its power while Japan a small island country seemed to be locked in isolation yet within a few decades China was thrown into turmoil. Unable to face the colonial challenge, the imperial government lost political control, was unable to reform effectively and the country was convulsed by the civil war. Japan was the other hand was a successful in building a modern nation state, creating an industrial economy and even establishing a colonial empire by incorporating Taiwan, Korea. It defeated China, the land that had been the source of its culture and idols in 1894 and Russia, a European power in 1905. The Chinese reacted slowly and faced immense difficulty as they sought to redefine their traditions to cope with the modern world and to rebuild their national strength and become free from Western and Japanese control. They found that they could achieve both objectives of removing inequality and of rebuilding their country through revolution inequality and rebuilding of their country. This went hand in hand in uh, China. The Chinese Communist Party emerged victorious by uh, from the civil war in 1949. However, by the end of the 1970s, Chinese leaders felt that the ideological system was retarding economic growth and development in China. This led to the wide-ranging reforms of the economy that brought back capitalism and the free market even as the Communist Party re retained political control. So which party was ruling over China? It is a one-party system.
Now the rulers established official departments to maintain records and write dynastic history about the Sima Qian. Sima Qian is considered the greatest historian of the early uh, China. In Japan, Chinese cultural influence led to a history being given a similar importance. Now, one of the earliest act of Meiji government was to establish in 1869 a bureau to collect records and write as it were a vic uh, victor's version of Meiji. Now, there was a great respect for the woman worked and literary this has meant that a wide ranging written materials, official history, scholarly writings, popular literature, religious texts, all has to be, all these has to, uh, to be uh, properly viewed and learned. Now printing and publishing were important industry in the pre-modern period and it is uh, possible for instance to trace the distribution of the book in 1800 which is also known as the 18th century China or Japan. Now modern scholars have used this materials in new and different ways. This is about the Chinese cultural now, China and Japan have had a long tradition of historical writings. As history was an important guide for the rulers, the past provided the standards by which they would be judged and modern scholarship has built on the work of Chinese intellectuals such as Liang Qichao or Hume Politik 1839-1931, one of the pioneers of the mod, uh, modern history in Japan as well as earlier writings of the European travelers such as the Italian Marco Polo and in China from uh, 1274 to 1290 the Jesus Prince Matteo Ricci in China and Louis Freus in Japan all of whom left uh, rich accounts of these countries. It has also been benefited from the writings of the Christian missionaries in the 19th century whose work provides valuable material for our understanding of these countries. Now scholarship in English from Joseph Nidham's monumental work on the history of the science and Chinese civilization or George Sanson's on Japanese history and the culture has grown and there is an immense body of sophisticated scholarship available to us today. In the recent years, writings by the Chinese and Japanese scholars have been translated into English, some of whom teach abroad and write in English. And in the case of Chinese scholarship, since the 1980s, many have been working in Japan as well as uh, write in Japanese. This has meant that we have scholarly writings from many parts of the globe that give us a richer and deeper picture of these countries that is China and Now Night to Kanun. In Japan, the surname is written uh, first. A leading Japanese scholar of China, Naito Kanun's writing influenced scholars who uh, scholars worldwide. The using of the new tools of Western historiographer Naito uh, built on a long tradition of studying China as well as bringing this experience as journalist there. He helped establish the uh, departmental of Kyoto University in 1907 in uh, Sinaron on China 1914. He argued that the Republican government offered the Chinese are way to end aristocratic control and centralized power that had ex existed since the Song dynasty. 
Now, a way to revitalize local society where reform must begin. He saw in Chinese history strengths that would make it modern and democratic. Japan, he thought, had an important role to play in China, but he underestimated the power of the Chinese nationalism. Now, in the next session, section 5 towards modernization, theme 11, part 2, path to modernization, we will continue with. Om Namah Shivaya.